of my broker education every single time I do my uh, my renewing of my license. And Ginger, you can probably attest to that too. I mean, it's like the very first section. Every single time they talk about agency. So here's the thing. I'm pretty strong about this because unfortunately I've had to have the experience of sitting there uh, with attorneys and defending you guys as agents in situations where you didn't have to do anything wrong. So keep that in mind for somebody to file a complaint against you. Um, however, here's the interesting thing. What I've discovered is very rarely will it ever be about agency. In fact, I've never seen somebody file a complaint about agency, but I can tell you it always turns into agency. And that's the thing you guys need to understand. Every single complaint, the first thing that the attorneys ask me about is agency. Who were we representing? How were we representing them? They want to see all of your documentation from all your communications. Because guys, that matters. How you communicate with somebody matters. And you need to understand that because you might be thinking that you're a transactional broker, but you're behaving like a single agent big problem if there's ever a lawsuit just so that you understand that okay um let me ask anybody here is, is anybody here on the call fairly new in the business fairly new anybody okay michelle okay michael great um did any of you buy a home in the last five years by chance okay michelle did you can you put your your microphone on um uh, okay, Michelle, did you use a realtor? Did you use a realtor? Uh, yes, Kevin. Okay, all right. So then that's that's wrong. Okay, so it's a, it's a Keller Williams agent. That doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Anybody use anybody use a realtor that was not with our Keller Williams offices? Speak up. Uh, Denise's iPad. Denise, where are you? Come on, speak up. I'm I'm here. I did buy a house here recently in Florida. Um, about three years ago. So okay. I'm getting ready to go down to see the rocket launch. So I'm looking, I'm <laughs> we're going to get in the car, but that's why I'm still listening. I'm All right. No, no, good, good, good. Cause I just want to ask you a couple questions. So Denise, you worked with a realtor, correct? Yes. Okay. And it wasn't a Keller Williams agent, correct? No, correct. Okay. Correct. Um, did, did you ever sign a document saying that your agent was a single agent? Uh, from my recollection, no, she was also the seller's agent. So it was a very bad situation. Okay. So yeah, we had a very, very bad situation. So right. yes, I don't remember signing that. All right. So when you, when you were working with her and, or, you know, other agents, anybody here, did you just assume that agent represented you in your best interest? Correct. I did. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's an interesting thing. Thank you, Denise, for that. That's an interesting thing because we tend to, uh, we think that the consumer understands how this works. They don't. And what happens is they assume that you're working in their best interest, even if you're a transactional broker. And you technically cannot do that. So we're gonna peel these pieces apart so that you can understand the differences and why we give you the option, the option, to be single agents because guess what you're gonna act like them anyways so why are we pretending that you know oh you so here let me give you the history of what happened uh one of our competitors um that the initials are cb um they thought it was important that everybody become transactional brokers they thought that it actually protected them and their liability when basically they think their agents have no skin in the game. Well, the problem with that is they've never explained to their, their agents nor taught their agents what it means to be a transactional broker. And they behave like single agents. And let me give you the example, the very first example that will, um, that, shows that you don't understand. So if you're a transactional broker and you use the words, my buyer 
or my seller, you have just breached that limited fiduciary and you now can be sued by both parties. Now, if you're a single agent, you can only be sued for misrepresentation by the person who you're actually representing. All right, so you need to understand that. See, when you're a transaction broker, you can be sued by both sides because you've misrepresented them. When you are a single agent, the only person that can sue you is the person you're actually representing if you've misrepresented them. So keep that in mind. Very, very interesting. And it's hard for us to understand the difference. But guys, if you've got somebody in your car and you're driving them around, you're becoming friends with them. Uh, you, you know, you get kind of intimate with these people. You learn about their families and their lives and what's going on. It's real hard to not want to take their side in the transaction, isn't it? Really hard, right? Right? I mean, come on. Um, it's hard to say, oh, you know, oh, I, I'm, I'm a transaction broken and I can't, I can't tell you that. We tend to speak, tell people too much um, when we're transaction brokers. So, uh, here's a great example. You're going to go show a listing um, of a company that you know all of their agents are transactional brokers. And you ask them about why is their seller selling? All right. And they proceed to tell you the seller's entire history. But they don't realize that you're a single agent. And what does that mean when you're a single agent? Everything they just told you, you now have to tell your customer, which is in their best interest. So let's start with the first document, Tamara. Can you put up my first document, please? I, I want you to look at it real quick. So here we go. Here's a single agent notice. There's nine things as a single agent that you are required to do. All right. Can you tell me what's different from a single agent notice to a transactional broker? What, what is actually eliminated on a transactional brokerage disclosure? Full disclosure. Full disclosure. No, well, oh, it's, full disclosure is required, okay? Regardless of your representation, even being a non-rep, you have to have you have the duty of full disclosure. I want you to hear that. Even if you don't represent anybody, you have the duty of full disclosure. So that's so not correct. Loyalty. 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 Two, three, and okay, four. stop right there. Loyalty. Yes. Loyalty number one. How can you be loyal to two sides? You can't, right? You, can't. you just can't be loyal to two sides. Great. What's the second one? Confidentiality. 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 That means that whatever your customer tells you, whether they're the seller, I'll take less than this, um, or they're the buyer, I'll pay more than this, you cannot disclose that information. Also information of things like why the seller is selling, unless he told you in writing it was okay to say things like he was in distress, he was in a divorce, he was in those kinds of things. You cannot disclose that information as a single agent and nor can you as a transactional broker so be aware of that so what's the other one confidentiality obedience confidentiality obedience loyalty yep. and obedience right because you can't be obedient to two sides so i want you to understand that you cannot be obedient to two sides Tamara, can you put up the transactional brokerage? Okay. So now you'll notice that the transactional broker notice has only seven duties. They're all exactly the same with the exception of the loyalty, the confidentiality, and the obedience. Those are the three missing. All those other words are spelled exactly the same one. Now, number six says limited confidentiality, okay? Unless waived in writing by a party. That means it prevents you from disclosure that the seller will accept the price less or that a buyer will pay more. 
any motivation of the of the customer or anybody that will agree a financing other than what's in the house. Okay. Hi, good morning. This is Kim Basin. Oh, thank you, Kim Basin. Let's let's put you on mute. Okay. Um, so I want you to understand that you have these two pieces. Now, can you take me to transition a transaction broker? All right. Yes. Consent to transition to transaction broker. Now, when do you need to have consent to transition to transaction broker? Once you have an agent from the same office. Right. Good. That was great. Same office, correct? Um, or what else? And you're showing same a property broker, with different office. other agent. Pardon? When you're you're showing property with another agent. Right, and, and you, correct, and uh, Xavier, your own, correct. So if it's your own listing, mm -hmm. um, now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna well, muddy the water here a little bit for you. Um, if it's your own listing, you don't automatically have to become a transaction broker. I want you to hear this, okay? So if it's your listing, and let's just pretend for just a second that um, you have a really, um, uh, you have a great listing and you have a really not so nice buyer call you on your listing. Okay. They're not so nice. They're, they're kind of um, aggressive. They're kind of rude. Um, they're trying to tell you, you know, what they're going to do and that you need to cut your commission or whatever they're trying to tell you. Um, you do not have to waive your single agency of the seller to write the deal because your commission is not attached to agency. Understand that. Mm -hmm. So if you choose to not transition to transaction broker, what are you to that buyer? Non-rep. Non-rep. You are a non-rep. That's the no broker relationship. Correct. And Tamara flipped to that one. Jerry, you can pick it up any time I ordered it from earlier. Okay. So no brokerage relationship notice. Now you have to disclose any agency immediately. So if you do not disclose that you are a non-rep to that customer, it is assumed that you are a transaction broker. This can also happen if you are a single agent for a buyer and you should be showing for sale by owners, correct? Yes, right? So if you're showing a for sale by owner, you should always give the for sale by owner the no brokerage relationship disclosure upon entering their home. If you do not, what is assumed? Single. No. Transaction broker for both Transaction parties. Transaction broker, which means you have a limited representation of both sides. We actually had a situation that happened many years ago with a very experienced agent who went and showed, uh, had a single agent with a buyer, had a buyer agency agreement with the buyer, went and showed properties uh, that were for sale by owners. The buyer decided to purchase the for sale by owner. The seller was fine paying the 3% commission. We got into the transaction, closing the deal. Couple of issues came up, couple of problems. And the seller says, well, you are a transaction broker, aren't you? You can't be working in the best interest of the buyer over me. Oops. Yeah, that agent screwed up. All right. It ended up being okay. We got it to the closing table. But guys, if you do not want to give up your single agent relationship, you must have a no brokerage relationship disclosure signed by either the for sale by owner you don't even have to have it signed. You actually just have to present it to them because maybe they're not going to be home. You have to present it to them. So you put it on their counter, you take a picture of it and say, look, 
I was here. I just wanted you to know my, my relationship with you as far as an agent is concerned. Um, very, 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 very important. Tamara, take it back to full screen. Um, what you all need to understand is, is that this is the biggest mistakes our agents make as agents. We go on and behave like single agents when we're actually transitioned to transaction brokers, especially when we're doing deals in-house. Mm -hmm. Now, an in-house deal is not just in your immediate office, is it? No. No. It's any office that has the same broker. So all three of the Ubaldini Group offices, Palm Harbor, Tampa, Bel Air, if you do a transaction cross office, you also must be a transactional broker. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Uh, so understand that. And this is where we get into hot water. So if an agent's in Palm Harbor and an agent's in Bel Air and they're doing a transaction, and let's say things get a little sideways between the buyer and the seller, then our agents get a little bit antsy because, you know, they, you know, they want the deal to come together, but you know, they're, they, they think they're representing their person, you know? So, um, we have, you know, they start saying things like, well, my buyer wants this. Well, my seller wants that guys, as soon as you start using that language, you have actually just breached your limited fiduciary to both sides. You are now open to litigation from both sides because you did that. So I want you to hear that. So, all right. So when you meet your customer, let's say it's a buyer, you meet them. You need to explain to them that they have rights, rights of having you solely represent them. Uh, interestingly enough, no other companies talk about this they just go out and show because now, crazily enough, the law does not require you to even discuss it because it's assumed that the customer knows. Well, we just heard that from, um, from our agent, Denise, who said, I assume she worked for me in my best interest, but she didn't, okay? This happens over and over and over again. And it's not a problem unless there's a problem. So I want you to hear that. As soon as a complaint happens, the immediate look, they immediately go to the agency relationship. And that becomes the biggest issue, which is why I struggle with Florida Real Estate Commission allowing companies to get away with not disclosing this to their customers. And part of that is, is because unfortunately we have competitors who basically have a lot of pull and are able to get things pushed through that they think work in their best interest. And because they don't want to spend the time to educate their customers, nor do they want their customers to know that they don't ever do single agency representation. That's their biggest issue. Because when the consumer is given a choice, what do you think they choose? That they choose to be re represented, right? They choose to have somebody represent their best interests. So you present the uh, single agent notice and you explain to them they have these rights, that they can choose to have you as their single agent. However, you must tell, tell them if you want to see and or purchase any property that is listed by myself or within my three offices, I will need to transition to transactional brokerage. And what that means at that point is I have limited confidentiality to both sides, which means I cannot disclose to you that the seller will accept less, nor can I disclose to the seller that you will, accept, that you will pay more. So my job is to help you to come to a meeting of the minds. Now, interestingly enough, consumers get that. They get it when it's explained to them. The problem is, is we're not explaining it to them. All right. Now, you as a single agent have a duty to inform other realtors that you are a single agent. Interestingly enough, they don't have a freaking clue what that means. 
So in their minds, it doesn't matter because they don't know what it means. But it's important that you've done your job correctly. So when you present an offer, you should always present it with your single agent notice. When, you, when an agent uh, presents an offer to you, you should always let them know that you are a single agent of the seller. So when you send back the contract, you can give them a copy of your single agency disclosure uh, for the seller. So, 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 so important, okay? Um, so let me just talk about what you need to do. So you get them to sign the single agent and you get them to sign the transition to transaction brokerage. That's all they need to sign when you go on that listing appointment or on that buyer's consult. You need the single agent and you need the consent to transition to transaction broker. Got it? Does everybody mm -hmm. say yeah? Okay. Got it. So now, so now, yes. when, go ahead. You have a question? Somebody have a question? Okay. So now when you are um, preparing to do a contract, Guess what you're going to do again? You're Send going out the notice to, again. Right. Very good. Thanks so, to my coach, Pam. All right. Good, Pam. And I, could, and I was asking her, why do we have to send it again? I already did it. She goes, right. no, you got to do it again. And so. let me tell you why. Okay. Because um, they need to understand what your representation is for that particular home. All right. So let me give you an example. You're, you're, working, you're working with a buyer, you're a single agent. You write an offer, you present your, you, and you have them re-sign a single agency agreement that is dated the same date as that contract. That way then it's understood that that's the understood representation at that time. Now, let's just pretend you go through the contract and you get to the inspections and the deal blows up. Okay, buyer says, eh, I don't want that house anymore. Okay, that's cool, right? So you go back out and you start showing them other houses. But now you've come across a home that's listed with one of your fellow agents in one of the three U Baldini group Keller Williams offices. Okay, not all Keller Williams, just the three U Baldini group. And they fall in love with it. And they want to write a deal on that one. Well, guess what you need to have them sign now? A transaction brokerage, transaction. right, dated the same date as that contract. Got it? Because that's how you are representing them on that contract. Let's pretend that contract blows up. Same thing. Crap. Okay, now we got two blown up contracts, which take them back out. You find them another property, and this time it's listed with XYZ Realty. Once again, we have them sign a new single agency agreement because it's now dated for the same date as the contract. This way, there is no confusion, no question whatsoever as to your agency relationship during this particular contract. Does that make sense? Yes. Any questions, comments, concerns, speak up. I have a question, Nikki. Go ahead. So if we have a, a buyer that we're working with, uh, with single agency representation, and we're going to go into a listing of our own or one of the Ubaldini Group offices, I get when we're going to write an offer if they're interested to have it. But I had heard in the past, like, hey, as we're walking into this home, I want to let you know how I'd be representing you. Because aren't we going to view the home and talk and have all that before right. they may or may not write an offer? Exactly. And, and I haven't got there yet. So thank you, Xavier. I was going to talk about how, what you're supposed to say when you're with them. So that's a great, great uh, question. So I appreciate that. Um, so let's just talk about that. Because what you say matters. And I don't think people realize how much what you say matters. Um, you are required to remind them of your representation and that you're going to roll in and roll out of single agency. So, for example, you're working with a buyer. You are a single agent. You go into a home, and let's pretend it's not listed with, with our offices. It's listed with XYZ Realty. 
let's pretend there are there's only half the furniture um there's only one set of clothes in the closet one you know one uh, gender clothes in the closet yet on the listing it says you know bob and betty you know a se uh, seller and um they're walking through and they turn around and they look at you and they say what do you think's going on here what can you say to them okay they're you're a single agent you say you know what I don't know, but I can find out. You, as a single agent, can find that information out and possibly use it to the benefit of your customer, all right? It might appear that somebody's been transferred or somebody has died or somebody's gotten a divorce. We don't know. You can actually have that conversation because you are a single agent, and that is in the best interest of them and their negotiations for that property. Now, that changes though, because when you go to go into a property that's listed by yourself or with one of your feller, fellow Keller Williams agents from the three Ubaldini Group offices, A, you say to them, I just wanna remind you, I'm a transaction broker as we're going in here, which means I represent both sides equally. That's what you say. Um, I cannot disclose anything. You walk in, same situation. Now, you may not know anything about that property because it might be, you might be in the Bel Air office and this is a Tampa agent's listing. You don't know anything about them, but they start asking you about that. You know, well, why do you think is, you think this is a divorce? Do you think there's a death here? Do you think this is, in, and what do you say? I can't disclose anything. I can't, I, I can't disclose that. I don't know. It's easier to say, I don't know, all right? Because that is not allowed, all right? Be very careful when you are talking to other agents because even though they are technically not allowed to disclose it to their customers, they are because they don't understand agency, which is why when you ask them questions, they tell you all kinds of stuff like, oh yeah, my seller, they didn't, they, they already had an offer for 250,000 and I know they'll take that. I know they'll take less than 250,000 and they go, right? And you're sitting there going, okay, all right. You're listening to all this. And then you're, you are required now by law to go back to your customer and say, first, I must disclose, I don't know how truthful this is but i was told by the listing agent that the seller will take less than x amount of dollars now whether that's truthful or not i don't know but i am required to inform you of that and this is how you deal with those differences now if you're working with a buyer and a seller it's both your sides let's pretend and the buyer says, well, what should I offer? Number one, what should you never tell a buyer? What to offer, right? You, That's you not your right. job. Even as a single agent, it's not your job to tell a buyer what to offer. It's your job to show them the facts. So whether you're a single agent or you are a transaction broker, you can show them the same facts. The facts are the facts are the facts, okay? So if you're showing them that the homes in this community have sold between 242,000 and 262,000, and this house is listed at 250,000, right? You'd say, well, here's the information that supported why they probably priced it the way they priced it. All right, you can say that to either side. And then they say, well, what should I offer? Well, I can't tell you what to offer. You have to decide based on the facts what is a fair offer to offer. All right, now keep in mind that these are the facts. So the seller is looking at the same thing that you're looking at. So they need to understand that that's both sides. Both sides need to understand that, okay? Very, very, very important. Now, when you are working with a buyer, 
and you are a single agent and you come up across a property that they fall in love with and you are just struggling to find comps. Let's just pretend there's not a single comp that validates that price. It's showing this property is probably way overpriced. Here's what I'd suggest you do. I'd suggest you call that listing agent and you say, hey, I have a buyer that's very interested in this property. Can you help me uh, with comparables to validate the listing price? So the buyer can make a fair offer. That's, that does not valid invalidate your in, a single agency. In actuality, it helps you with that seller. Now, in, interestingly enough, I had that situation happen. This was a long time ago. And the agent said, there are no comps. She said, so please bring the offer based on the comps. And if you wouldn't mind supplying the comps when you present your offer, I would appreciate it. So what that told me was that this agent was struggling with their seller and their seller wasn't hearing them. So we happily did that. And guess what? We sold the property. The seller took the deal because we were able to validate it. We didn't turn it into a fight between me and the other agent. This isn't a fight, okay? You have to understand, you represent the buyer, but it's not to fight with the seller. It's not to put them at odds. It's to help them get what they want. And agency is one of those ways that you can help people get what they want. You can talk to them, you can advise them, you can guide them when you're a single agent. You can't always do that. So let me give you an example as a single agent of a seller. Let's say that seller gets multiple offers. They have three offers sitting in front of them. And they say to you, well, which offer should I accept? Well, number one, it's not your place to tell them which offer to accept, but it is your job to tell them the benefits of each of the offers and the cons, the non-benefits to them of each of the offers. That helps them to make their best decision. You can honestly tell them that, you know, just because it's the highest number doesn't necessarily mean it's the strongest contract you know, escrow amounts, uh, financing issues, all of those pieces are very important. But you can have those conversations about each of those deals as a single agent, all right? As a transactional broker, you can't, all right? You can point out price, escrow, you know, closing dates, those things like that, but you can't discuss the benefits versus the non-benefits even though I know you guys are. <laughs> uh, because it's hard, it's hard, very hard to not want to represent the person that you've been spending the most time with. And, but here's the problem, whether you're a single agent or not, you're gonna behave like that. So this is why we encourage you to use single agency because most of the time, about eight out of 10 times, you're not gonna be in a transactional brokerage situation. Most of the time, that customer is going to have a, you're gonna either sell them something that's not listed within our company, or you're going to be a listing agent that has a buyer that comes from somebody else outside of the company. It's a, it's a very small percentage, it's about 20% of the time that you'll actually have to transition to transaction broker. But that shouldn't be a problem if you've done your job and you've educated them, and you're using the stats and the information to do the training and the talking. All right, so let me ask you, what are your questions so far? Have I completely confused you, and is it clear as mud right now? Okay. I have a question. Go ahead, question. You said as a single agent, when you hear something, if you're representing the buyer as a single agent and you hear something that the seller said that could materially affect their decision, I guess, and value on the property, you have to tell yes. the buyer? Correct. You are required by law to do that. Okay. You are required by law to, uh, to disclose whatever you have heard if you're a single agent. Now, is not, you know, because everything matters in that situation. Now, 
How you disclose it though is another thing. So let's just talk about that. Let's say the seller is being a jerk <laughs> and they say something um, derogative or negative about your customer. You do not have to disclose that because that does not affect their ability to negotiate. I want you to hear that. If the seller is being ugly, you can hold the ugly apart from the transaction. In fact, you should never, ever, ever disclose to your customer that the other side is being ugly. I don't care how nasty or mean or, you know, that they are, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. I have literally watched agents blow up transactions because the other agent ticked them off. And it became a power struggle between the agents when we had a buyer that wanted to buy and a seller that wanted to sell. I, I, I was just, I was appalled, just totally, completely appalled that agents would do that. But that's exactly what happened. So guys, get off your high horse. It's not about you, okay? It's about them and what they need. So I got right? a question. Yes. Uh, so going back to your example of, um, you know, you walking in a house, you're a transactional broker. Actually, no, you were a single agent and you saw half the closet missing, you know, only the guy's clothes was in there. And, um, you know, the, your buyer asks you what's going on. So being that you're a single agent, you can answer that question. Uh, but let's say you're doing transaction, right? Now you can't answer that. So... Uh, do you just tell your buyer, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question, or you just say, because I'm a transactional broker, I'm not allowed to answer those questions? Like, how either would you? Or. Either or. You can do it either way. What you need to understand is um, you may not even know what the situation is. So let's start there. The odds but, are. But, let, but let's say they ask you, let, let's say they ask you, why is there no closing? Right. Order? But like, let's just pretend, Michael, you may not actually know why. Mm -hmm. set what, why that situation is because the odds are you don't know just Correct. so that you understand right. that um, most of the time you won't know but let's just pretend that you happen to have a conversation um, I see Kristen is right next to you so let's pretend it was Kristen that was her listing and you two had a conversation about this property you know you had mentioned to her look um, my buyer can only afford to buy up to 250 Kristen's listing is listed at 260 and, you know, you say, is it worth me showing it, Kristen? Because, you know, I mean, between you and me as agents. Now, you guys can have that conversation, but you cannot disclose what you had, that the conversation that you had. So um, what you're doing is you're trying to help people come to a meeting of the minds. And Kristen might say to you, you know, uh, Michael, um, I think they probably would based on uh, some of the situation that's going on with them, you know. Um, between you and me, they're in a divorce. Um, it's very contentious. It's not pretty. Um, and you know, basically they're ready to get out of the property, but I can't promise you that they'll accept it, but I think it would be worthwhile to show your buyers, um, because the comps do support an offer of 250. Okay. That's a conversation the two of you can have. Now, Michael, you cannot say that conversation to your buyers. No, no, no. Of okay? course not. Yeah. Um, but the problem is, is that when we're in house, we know that, but they don't know that outside of our office. Okay. So be careful what you say to those other agents, even yeah. though they're not supposed to say something, they are saying stuff to their customers. Okay. They're even speculating. They would be somebody that would be in your listing with the half the, fur half the furniture, half the clothes. And they might say, Oh, this could be a distress situation. That, can, they cannot say that, but I promise you they do. <laughs> we hear it on a regular basis. They'll call you and say, why is your seller selling? Because they want to sell their home. Well, what's the reason? I'm sorry, I can't disclose that to you. They want to sell their home. Unless the seller said, I'm moving to California and I don't care who you tell, I'm moving to California. You can tell them I'm moving to California. That doesn't make me want to accept anything less. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes the seller will say, yes, put it in, put it in the MLS, this is a divorce. Put it in the MLS that it's pre-foreclosure. You know, put it in the MLS that it's this, that, that, that it's whatever. If they're yeah. allowing you to disclose it, then by all means you can do that. Yeah, or the buyer may ask, or the buyer may say, 
that, hey, this looks like a divorce. Maybe I can get the furniture for free. <laughs> and, you say, and you know what you say? I don't know that answer. I don't know, right. Uh, I don't know. And if you want to ask for it, you can. Right. That's all you can say. Got it. Because I technically, agree. they can. Yep. All right? Yep. The way so you, you have to have that in writing. Pardon? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You have to have that in writing, though, from your seller that you can disclose that, correct? Correct. Correct. If it's anything that could adversely affect their ability to negotiate or put them in an adverse situation, you, you do need to have them uh, allow you to do that. Sometimes agents think just because they said, you know, oh, yeah, well, we're getting a divorce. We're selling our house. Think that they can go ahead and market it that way. You need to specifically ask the seller, um, are you okay with us putting that information in the MLS? Okay. If they say, well, no, I don't want people to know that. Then you zip your lip because they don't want people to know that. Um, it's not, you shouldn't be telling people that, but you see, unfortunately, realtors do that all day long. They have uh, diarrhea of the mouth and constipation of the brain. They just, you know, they just all everything out and they just tell the world stuff that they shouldn't be telling the world. They get themselves into a corner. All right. Uh, yes. Can I just uh, remind everybody that when they're doing their files for compliance, um, that they don't pull the agency representation out of the listing and then include that one in the right. in the contract. Correct. They all, they always get a new one signed. So if you're representing the seller, same thing. Uh, offer comes in. It's another agent outside of our company, you still get them to re-sign a single agent notice dated for the same date as that contract. This, is, this protects your hiney, just so that you know. This is so they can never say, well, I didn't know. And same thing, if it was an offer that came in from, the, from one of your fellow agents and, um, and they transitioned the transaction broker, have them sign the transaction broker dated for that date that way, then they can never say, I didn't understand that you didn't solely represent me because that will be their complaint should something go awry. I promise you. All right. And, and we, like I, you said, I'm sorry, Nikki, like you said, we should maybe um, like give them a heads up. We're, you're, uh, this isn't going to be the only time you sign this. We're going to have to sign them for each and every time and just getting them accustomed to it. So it's like no big deal. Absolutely. It's part of doing business, guys. This, this should be normal. And you know, here's the thing, because it's a benefit to them that they get single agency. As I shared with you, 80% or more of the time, you're going to stay in that single agency representation. And that is valuable to them. Okay. You're in that single agency representation to them the entire time that you're scouring areas. So you can tell them about all these things and you should be disclosing all those things anyways something you need to understand is you do not have a duty of discovery though so i want you to understand you have a duty of disclosure but not a duty of discovery very very different okay and that's for any of those representations whether you're a single agent transaction broker or a no rep you, uh, you have disclosure requirements of all three, but you don't have a duty, okay, to do research um, and to find out information. So be aware of that. They have their own duty to do their own research. So um, a classic example, and, and actually this agent did everything right, but she got dragged into a lawsuit. This was many years ago. Um, she worked with buyers who were very specific that they did not want to have rear neighbors. We don't want rear neighbors. Okay. So she put in the MLS. Um, I'm looking for um, green areas, green belts, preservation areas. And that was what she put in. She did disclose to her buyers. Now this is Florida. So you need to understand that there's no guarantee that it will remain that way. She actually said that. She actually gave them uh, on a sticky note, which she took a picture of and had it in her file, okay, smart agent. Uh, she sent them to the Department of Transportation, 
uh, the Department of Agriculture, all of these different departments gave them the phone numbers and said, if you want to do any more investigation, here it is. Now, going through the property, the buyers speak to the seller and the listing agent, who was of a different company, and they both say, oh, yeah, yeah, this is a green belt. Oh, yeah, I paid extra for this property. It'll, it'll always be back there like that. You don't need to worry. Oh, yeah, yeah, I paid extra for this. So the buyers did not pick up the phone, did not do their investigation, and guess what? They move in, and not six months after they move in, one of their wonderful neighbors come over, and they're talking about their beautiful house and where it backs up to, and their neighbor goes, well, you do know that there's a road proposed to go back there in the 10-year plan. And they go, what? And they said, yeah, it's in the 10-year plan. Now, understand that was 10 years to be, but it was in the 10-year plan to build a road behind this property. Well, of course, these buyers immediately freaked out. They did not include our agent in the lawsuit in the beginning. They sued the seller and the listing agent, and it dragged on. In fact, our agent went in and you know did a deposition. I went in and did a deposition. Uh, we were not involved in the in the in the uh, lawsuit. But your agent was not at fault because they were full disclosure. And well, but wait a second, Michael. You you you're quick to think that, and I, I agree with you. They were not included in it until we got to four years and six months. Because at five years, the statute of limitations runs out. Mm, okay. So at four years and six months, because they had not yet come to a resolution on this situation, guess who they countersued and dragged into the complaint? You guys, wow. Our agent right? Our company. And I'll never forget that mediation. I'll never forget it. I walk in and in walks the, uh, the other agent was actually from Remax and in walks the Remax attorney with, you know, this big box of all kinds of documents, clearly all their stuff. They walk in with that. And then the seller's attorney walks in and they have a big box of stuff and we walk in and they go around the table and they ask everybody who they are and they get to that, to the, to the um, agent's attorney and the Remax attorney and he goes, look, I'm here to settle. I'm done with this case. <laughs> so they ended up settling, but understand, we actually had to write a check too. Very small amount was about three grand, but three grand for not doing anything wrong really sucks. Let's just tell you that, and guess what? That was the deductible that had to be paid. So it's, it's, I don't think it's only the money, but it's also all the time and effort and, it, and anguish that you, you spend in right. there. It's yeah. all the stress. And the reason that we got out of there with that is because, um, and we could have said, you know what? No, you sued us. Let's go to court. But guess what? That's going to cost us a whole heck of a lot more than that $3,000. Like you said, that stress, that anguish, all of that. Guys. All you have to do is disclose and follow the rules. Being a single agent is what you want for your customer. And I can tell you, if we pulled the consumer, they will tell you that's what they want you to do. Okay. So it's very, very, very important that you give them the option. Now I, I am going to give a prediction here. Unfortunately, we live in a litigious society. And um, like I said, very rarely will there ever be a lawsuit because of agency. However, as I said, it's always the first question that the attorney asks. I believe that there will be some young, excited attorney to get their hands on this opportunity and create a class action suit against our industry by uh, agents not disclosing that the consumer has rights to single agency. And, you know, starting checking with, you know, websites and, 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 um, and uh, remarks that are made that uh, people that were disgruntled by their realtors and, and a smart um, ambulance chasing attorney could definitely create quite the case 
um, by going after companies that are all transactional brokerage because literally I have sat in, I have sat in a deposition listening to an agent from another company describing their relationship with the customer and how they advised them and they did this and they did that. And the attorney looked at them, so you were a single agent. Right. They, had, <laughs> they had the dumbest look on their face, like, what's that? And, well, uh, you know, and that's where they took it. And at that point, everything they did, because they claimed to be, you know, by what they said and what they did. So whether you have a piece of paper signed or not, your actions will determine your agency. That's what I want you to hear. Okay. Questions, comments? I have a question. Yes, go ahead, Christian. Okay, so not that this would ever happen to me, but um, if I do say something, like it comes out and then I'm like, uh-oh, you know, I just said something. Because where I, where I have a problem is when I have a listing and the buyer. Mm -hmm. And I love them both and I know them both and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I have to act so differently from what my natural way of being is. Right. And so if I say something like, well, you know, she's an older lady and like, she, you know, I could just see myself saying something right. that I couldn't say. What do you do to, to like mitigate what you've just done? Do you just pray? <laughs> yeah. Basically, don't try to go back and say, well, I didn't mean, but don't, because now you're bringing attention to it. Okay. Right. So let's try to take the attention away from what you just said. Um, and you know, if you said, well, you know, she's, she is older, you know, and then you could say, but that really doesn't matter because their, her age really shouldn't matter whether she wants to sell it or not. You know, you can change it like that and then just move on. Okay. Don't harp on it. But, um, and not that I've ever said anything, Jackie, that I needed to take back. Okay. You know, I mean, right. <laughs> We've all said, Tamara, that's enough out of you. Tamara's over there shaking her head. No. Um, I want you all to understand that you're human. You're going to make a mistake or two. Just don't keep burying yourself. And that's what happens is agents, they'll make the mistake and then they just keep going straight down that chute and they keep making it worse and worse and worse. Um, it's no different than if you get a complaint. Let's say you were a single agent and you got a complaint. Don't ever call them or put in an email yes i made a mistake don't do that because you actually may not have made a mistake all right um and, and you know i had a i i was a, the, my very first trial i ever was a part of um was a very 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 large agent who had um uh she's she listed a property it was down on allen's creek and actually the property line um, abutted the creek, but it did not include the creek. And she uh, put on there that it, um, per the MLS rules, it says um, uh, waterfront or water view, right? And um, she did put uh, waterfront, all right? So I'm thinking she was wrong, you know, because she gets a lawsuit because the buyer that buys this property. Um, apparently he ticked off the neighbor and the neighbor who actually owned the strip that went along the edge of the water came in and put a fence up so he couldn't take his little canoe down anymore. That's what happens when you piss off your neighbors. But anyways, he was not very nice. And the seller had actually shown him, oh yeah, I take my canoe down here. This is how I go. So he just assumed. Um, he also had a survey that showed that that was not that, but that the waterfront abutted their land. So it was considered, per our MLS rules, waterfront, interestingly enough. This was the very first case that I ever met Lori Hine, who you've all seen uh, doing our, our um, at risk aversion. And she comes in like this little uh, mean chihuahua, and she says to me, I believe we can win this case. And I'm like, yeah, but how? She said it was waterfront and they didn't actually have waterfront. She goes, no, no, no. let's find out what the rules are with the MLS. We contact the MLS and the MLS says, it's just abutting the water. 
Doesn't mean you have to have access. Doesn't say water access. She didn't say water access. She said waterfront. Interesting. Semantics, right? So here she is. She represented the seller. Um, seller disappeared. Couldn't find the seller. Apparently he was a little slimy anyways. Um, but literally we went to trial and we won because this buyer and his, his attorney would not negotiate a mediation. And we finally pulled the plug and said, fine, let's go to trial. And we went to trial and we won based on that. Now she stood her ground and she did the right thing because technically it was a waterfront property. So I want you to understand, once again, she was a single agent. The other agent on the other hand, who got dragged into the lawsuit, okay, claimed to be um, a transaction broker. Well, they had made a lot of comments that they should not have made to this customer. They had done their own research for the customer and all those things. Uh, and they got nailed on, in that trial that they advised, they did not advise their customer um, based on their behavior who thought that they were a single agent. They did not advise them of what the definition of waterfront was in the MLS. Very interesting. They ended up paying us for our attorney's fees. So, um, yeah. So, understand, you never know the way something's going to go. Um, I was shocked because I thought for sure we would lose this deal. And she was adamant that, no, we were going to win it. And that's why we have such a great attorney, because she knows what she can do and she knows what we can't do. So I want you to understand that. She loves the fact that we are single agents that transition to transaction broker because we understand agency. She will tell you that 99% of the realtors that she works with, including other Keller Williams agents from other Keller Williams offices, do not understand agency and get themselves in a pickle. Big time pickle. So just be careful. Another thing I'm gonna say, it's not about agency. Guys, stop putting things in emails that can be misconstrued and used against you mm. all right you don't need to do that pick up the phone have a conversation with us let us know what your concerns are your questions are do not send an email to ginger or to me that says i screwed up <laughs> yeah no don't do that i think i made a mistake don't do that uh you know <sighs> just send a text message hey I need to talk to you contract issue wonderful we'll talk so just remember that. But remember what agency means. Single agent, it's just like an attorney-client privilege. Transaction broker means you have limited representation of both sides. Means you cannot disclose anything that might harm the other party's position in negotiations. That's the easiest way to understand it. And then the last is no rep, which means you owe them nothing other than duty of disclosure, and to deal with them honestly and fairly and to handle all, all funds properly. That's it. Go ahead, Pam. Do you have a question? So just to clarify on the no brokerage relationship side. So if we're working with a for sale by owner and we've disclosed we're acting as you know, we're no brokerage, when the for sale by owner says, so what does this mean? Inspection period, 15 day inspection period. At that point, we need to simply say, you know, that would be a good question for you to shit to, um, ask your attorney or someone Correct. that's supporting you, right? Correct. We don't well, all, all you can do them, right? Is, right. All you can do, Pam, is take them back to the section of the contract. Well, here, read this section. It explains what it means. You okay. can do that. You can tell redirect them back to the section of the contract. Okay. okay. Here, section such and such talks about that. You know, uh, section such and such talks about that. If they say, well, what does that mean? Well, I, I'm, you know, I can't, explain that to you because I'm not an attorney. You mm -hmm. should seek legal counsel if you don't understand. Mm -hmm. So very important. I'm gonna take it back one more time just to stress that I've had multiple experienced agents not understand that they, A, when it's their listing, um, can still write an offer for somebody who says they don't want representation on their property or they choose not to give them representation. That does not mean they have to give up their commission. 
So uh, let me just let me just reiterate that. I had an agent call me this not just a couple of years ago, very good agent, one of our top top agents who had a buyer who called her and said, "Look, I want to write an offer. I want you to write an offer on uh, on your property for me. I don't need your representation, and I want you to give me the uh, the three percent selling side commission." Mm -hmm. And she said, well, I'm sorry, the commission has nothing to do with you. It's between me and the seller. And, um, and she said, and so she thought that she couldn't do that. And I said, no, go ahead, write the deal, do a non-rep, tell him that the commission is off limits. The commission has nothing to do with his offer or with your agency. So keep that in mind. You don't have to be a transaction broker to get paid the other side of the commission. So keep that in mind, all right? Has, there are two different things, okay? Any other questions, thoughts, concerns? Yeah, so the person that, uh, that you were in that dispute with for four and a half years, mm -hmm. uh, who did they list the house with to sell it? <laughs> they're still living in it. Oh, they're still living in it, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So. Yeah, Nikki. Yeah. Nikki, you, you said um, you, you broke down each one, and you said non-rep is nothing but what? Uh, Tamara, put up the non-rep form so they could just look at it real quick. Well, it's only got three duties on it. It's got you got you have to do disclosure, which means if you know anything that materially affects the value of the property, it's required. Um, you have to account for all funds, and you have to deal honestly and fairly. Pretty pretty easy. Those are the three things. Um, that you have to do, regardless of your representation, you have to do these three things, whether you're a single agent, transaction broker, or you are a, a non-rep. Those are the three that you have to do for all three. Okay? Uh, one all right. more question? Another and that's one? why it's very important that if you are showing FISBOs, you have those in your car, you write it in, and you put it on their counter, and I would take a picture that you gave it to them so there's no questions if they're not available to sign it, okay? If they're not available to sign it at that point, but if you decide to write an offer, make sure you have one included in your documents for them to sign with the offer if they're agreeing to take your offer. So that way then there's no question that you don't represent them. You only represent the buyer, okay? All right. Did we learn anything? Yes. Yeah, I mean, thank you. I, can I get two ahas? What are the ahas? No, no aha, aha, but what's the two ahas? Communication is key. Communication is key. Great, Scott. Yeah. Document everything. Document everything. Duty of discovery. Yeah. You don't have a duty of discovery, so stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Give them the duty. Give them, you can give them numbers and say, go check it out, but you do not have the duty of discovery. So do not start going down that path, okay? Um, not, not, in, not for you. Um, all right, what you say matters. That's another one. Guys, I appreciate you. Thank you for your time. Um, have Thank a wonderful you, day, wonderful week. I hope this was valuable to you all. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.